Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. How are you? I'm fine. I'm trying to keep myself under control and not get angry every time I hear something on the news. (laughs) And that's kind of funny because I just absolutely had to distance myself from something today. Anyway, all that to say this, that history is really a good thing to learn. Um, Not only am I married to a wonderful musician, but I'm also married to a man who really loves history and loves to read, and I love to hear his input. But before we get to Jeff today, there's a couple of things I want to talk about on this podcast, episode number 13, how history is so vital. History is vital to learn. History is vital to know. And I have about seven points of my own. Uh, This doesn't mean that I'm, you know, the end all of end all in the, you know, the most (laughs) knowledgeable. But I will say I know as a person, biblical history as well as cultural history is, is important to learn. And it's important to have as a frame of reference Whenever something new comes down the pike, and I don't want to sound like Aesop's fables today, but it really is important that you learn from your mistakes and you learn from where others have made mistakes. And we also learn from our victories and we learn from our culture. And so there are seven things where I thought today as I was writing. Number one, one of the things that I believe is so vital right now in 2020, especially on this particular COVID-19 pandemic era that we're experiencing, is that we really need to understand society and we really need to understand culture. Of all the reasons to study history, the one thing that is the most important is to somewhat get an idea of what's going on. So how can we you know, be able to understand society today without understanding what was created in it and why are people expressing themselves in the reason and the reason they're doing so. The events and people that shaped who we are today are incredibly important, whether you agree with them or not. And I'm not going to get on a political rant today, but I'm just saying generally across the board, every Christian, every comedian, every singer, anybody who sings or preaches the gospel needs to understand the culture. That's why I have always at 64 years old, I know that shocks you, at 64, I'm continually trying to learn new things and learning new platforms and new ways of doing things, understanding the culture that is behind me. And the ones that have iPhones ever since they've been, you know, a month old in their hands. So we're trying really hard to understand how we got to where we are today. That's number one. Number two, one of my reasons is to understand that with every culture, every diversity, every country in the world, there's always going to be change. That, that, that terrible word that many people don't like. I have friends that don't like to change. I mean, I have some that are still using (laughs) iPhone fives because they don't want to change. So going along with understanding society and understanding this culture, studying history, I believe, this is my opinion, it, it allows us to look into what causes change. And the events that leading up to both world wars, in fact, they help us to understand how a small event can set off a large series of changes. And boy, that's the truth, isn't it? History gives us the opportunity to see how daily life has changed over the years and what goes into the fostering or what goes into the future planning of that change. So number one, again, understanding our culture and society. And number two, understanding that change will happen. But I will remind you again that as a believer, thank God his word never changes and Jesus never changes. So that's, that should probably always be said. But I, I know it's kind of my mantra, if there is such a thing. Jesus never changes when everything else around me is falling apart. So number three, how about this one? It provides knowing history 
will provide a sense of identity. I can say that because that's why my brother and I constantly post pictures about our history and our family, because it gives me the identity of where I've come from. It reminds me again of how great my grandparents were in loving and caring for their kids and caring for their grandkids. It reminds me of a time when the simple things were just as important as the complicated. And it reminds me every time I know as we get older, one of the greatest gifts that you can give an elderly person, one of the greatest gifts that you can give someone who's in their senior years are pictures, something that they can reflect on. And so it's no wonder that websites like Ancestry.com are so popular. I know I may have told you this, but, you know, I flunked my Ancestry.com. I flunked it three times, my spit test. Oh, it's a long story, but it's funny. Finally, I did get the results, and I have a lot of Irish in me. I have a lot of English in me. I even have a smidgen of German, but, boy, I'm most proud of my West African Congo, Toto, Togo, and West African Cameroon culture. That's what I'm really proud of. Don't laugh at me. But I, that really is, it makes me, makes me happy. So the events that lead up to all of these things, uh, you know, where you come from, what bloodline uh, is in your veins? Uh, is there any interesting family history? And, and between Jeff and I, we've got quite, a, quite a, a, a vast diversity of culture in our past. Uh, knowing the history of your family is very important. And it's, it's a sense of identity and it's a sense of belonging. That's why children who are adopted into families that yes, they're probably raised by some of the greatest people who have chosen to love them, but a child will still want to find out who his real mother and who her real father is. That is part of history, and that's part that gives us the identity. So one, again, understanding our culture. Number two, understanding change. Number three, uh, finding our sense of identity. And number four, and you're going to like this one, and we may talk about this with Jeff in a few minutes, but it's preserving stories, becoming storytellers. Uh, it's important that we hear stories of those who preceded us. I find talking to my grandfather back in the day, uh, Pop-Up Link, who was raised in Salem, New Jersey, um, he basically grew up without a mom. I mean, his mother died when she was uh, just a, he was just a little a little boy, and then my great-grandfather remarried, and his stepmother was very cruel to him. He could only eat shredded wheat with water. I mean, they didn't even have enough money to put milk on their cereal. And he talks about those real difficult days that gives me such a, a shaping and understanding of just how blessed we are in a culture that just about never has to worry, at least at least in the United States of America. I mean, I know we have homeless and I know we have people that are disenfranchised and we'll always have so, some of those that are going through tough times. But let me ask you this question. When was the last time you put water on your cereal? So it, it, it really does help me in the preservation of stories, like talking to my grandparents, uh, growing up and understanding in their time and just sitting down at, at their feet and hearing such great stories. All of my grandparents are gone. And the irony is, is that now I'm the matriarch of my family. And that scares me. It really does to think that truly I am the oldest female in my line of history. So I have to be responsible, I believe, to pass along good stories and historical stories and important stories about my family to my grandsons. I really want to do that, and I'm making sure that that happens. So we need to hear stories, and we need to preserve them, and we need to pass them down to those after us. Another thing is also, uh, number five, to inspire you. Uh, hearing stories of those before us inspire us to take action, and knowing that my ancestors came to this country and worked their hardest for a better life. That's why I've said over and over again, if you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, I almost hope that my father can't see what's going on down here. It would, it would absolutely just trouble him. If he's in heaven and he's able to see what's going on, it would absolutely destroy him to see how the United States of America is so, uh, just so troubled right now. 
So all of that to say our past can have a huge impact on our future. And we need that inspiration to teach us. And number six, it also gives us the warning signs. Uh, one of the things that I did some research on was in the Jewish community, they prayed together that another Holocaust would never happen again. And because of our suffering, you know, we've learned the warning signs leading to such a horror. And we don't want to have another Holocaust. So if we know about it and we understand what got that, that horrific thing to happen, we can, as a society, I hope, prevent that from happening again. Uh, taking warning si signals like that and fighting against them and knowing what events led up to a large occasion helps us better predict and influence our future. Now, this isn't History 101 or Civics 101. I, I'm not a history teacher, and again, but I do know from my own personal experience, if I have had something happen to me uh, several years ago and I had a bad experience at it, and I attempt to do it again and have a continual bad experience, history tells me, Sue, maybe you shouldn't do that, or maybe you shouldn't go there, because history is my teacher that I was a failure at that, and I didn't do very well. But finally, number seven, here's my favorite one. And again, this is my opinion, and I'm allowed because this is the Subiquitous podcast. It helps me to be a better person when I understand history. Uh, it's not boring. Now, I'm not the type that really gets into a lot of the diversity of history, uh, the politics or the, you know, the whole human thing. But I will say this. I continue to focus in on the most important reasons to, to study history and even read about it. It does make me a better person. I'll have a better understanding of the world and what shaped it to make it what it is today. Um, I do know I understand the suffering when I see the homeless of Nashville, when I'm experiencing that and watching it and hearing the stories, the success stories of our church in Nashville that tell of incredible stories. And so you know from that point on how you treated the homeless 10 years ago, and you're still learning on how to be better at it. Uh, chaos is, is important to learn. Why people do what they do is important to learn. And what do you think of my reasons to study history today? Well, there are some reasons you think it is important to study. But the truth is, it's not just a one-and-done thing. It's not, well, I, I took that course in school, or I did something in high school, or I did something in college, and I'm done. But reassociating and re-familiarizing yourself with books like George Orwell's Animal Farm in 1984. I went back and downloaded it on my iPad, and I got to tell you, there's so many things that I didn't see the first time I read it, and it really has given me a brand new visual of what we're experiencing right now. Of course, we can all go to the book of Revelation, and we can surely find out why we're going through what we are. But I do have one of the best, my best history teachers in the other room. And his name is Jeff Duffield. And most of you may not realize this. He's not just a pretty face. And he's just not the cord queen king. <laughs> I certainly hope The not. cord queen king. <laughs> that covers well, it. Well, you know, you're divided down the middle. I know you have. I guess. <laughs> But you are a history buff. Now, I have a history joke for you, all right? On some facts, uh, facets of history. I'm not really a total. No, I know. But you are, you are, you're, you're far superior than some in conversation. Okay. Okay. And I have watched that. Okay. Thank I've you. I've watched over the years. You haven't meant necessarily to own the other person. That's not in your, <laughs> that's not in your. Oh, um, I don't know about that. <laughs> But I mean, when somebody Lord, Lord starts, I apologize. I, Lord, I apologize. When you start, when someone starts pontificating about something, and you know that historically it's not correct, you can't help but just say, you know, um, I don't think so. And I love watching that because you're not trying to be mean. You're just saying, um, <laughs> again, I say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, All right, here's, here's my joke. You okay, ready? go ahead. All right, my joke is, why was World War One so quick? 
Okay, go, I'll play along. Go ahead. Because they were Russian. Oh, Is that good? Okay, so since you are the war buff and the World <sighs> War II buff, why was World War II so slow? I don't know. Because they were Stalin. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Isn't where that did, good? Oh, where did you get these? I just loved it. I thought it would be so appropriate those for you who today. Live, those who lived through both of these encounters, I don't <laughs> think would agree with your <laughs> assessment that they were slow. Well, it's Stalin. Or not get or it? quick, it's rather. Stalin. It's yeah, I, I, yeah, I get it. All right. The black it's, and white's coming out of me. The, just, the First World War was not fast. It, because it was Russian. R-U-S-S-I-A-N. I get it. Oh, my word. I, you, you see you what I'm have, saying? You didn't have to explain it to me. <laughs> anyway. Well, I thought it would be fun to... Since we don't always agree on everything. Obviously. And sometimes your history is different than mine, even though we shared it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, no, no, no. That would be an interpretation of history. Oh, the interpretation. Or a revisionist Oh, in the some revision, case. yes. Yeah, the history's there. The history is there. Even we, if we don't agree on it. Well, go ahead. Let's well, delve in and see if we okay, can find some let's, disagreements. Let's, for the audience's sake, yes. for those that are new to Jeff and Sue Duffield, mm-hmm. and there aren't very many, there might be some new well, audience. hopefully there's a whole lot. Well, there, there are. Yeah. I want to go very far back. I want to go back to the very first time uh, yeah. that I ever met you. Okay. And now, you, I will say... And you remember this more clearly yes. than I do, so I'm told. Okay, and here, and I can visualize it still to this day. Mm-hmm. We were at, we were in Hackettstown, New Jersey. Okay. And we were at Pleasant Grove Youth Camp. I've been there. And we... Our, I guess I, I went up by bus, I think. I'm not sure if I did or not. I don't remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. But so I'm, a, a, you know, not a musician, but I am taking accordion lessons. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I walk into, I walk into the accordion lessons. That's another story. I, we, I walk into the uh, camp chapel. Yes. And there you are sitting on mm. the front row okay playing an accordion and i have absolutely no No recollection recollection of that that. and i think your friend herb Mm -hmm. did he go to camp with you that year Mm -hmm. that very first year Mm -mm. Mm -mm. well someone was playing the organ okay with you i don't believe i don't believe we'd have to verify this but i don't believe herb did rube oldring did one year and i believe it was the first year and he was so miserable that he couldn't take it. Somebody had to come get him. Yeah. yeah I oh, that's him. oh, he was homesick. <gasps> Whatever he was, oh, he did know, not I like it. That. Oh, yeah, that he, was so sad. Yeah, he wasn't crying or anything. No, he was but just he just grumpy. Could, he couldn't. Handle. Yeah, he hated it. Anyway. Well, then I, now here's what I never understood, and I never knew. Okay. And you can answer this question: uh, Did you bring your accordion? Well, I'm sitting here thinking that you're saying that I again. I. I don't, you know, visually recall that, but the, but yet something tells me that I was told to bring it. Yeah, ex- that was the days when if you played an instrument, I'm guaranteed Rube bro- brought his trumpet. Yeah, I think he did, but and he I, never never got it out. Yeah. I don't think I brought my accordion, though. I don't think I did. Something tells me that the higher ups, you know, yeah. meaning my father... Yeah. <laughs> um, directed me to bring it. You will go to camp, yeah, and you will play the accordion. <laughs> With me of making you play your accordion, yeah. So I, I seem to think that. Yeah. I, you know, don't know. And so after that, mm. I kind of came. I was just hanging around. You know, I'm just a 12 year old. You're just. And so was I. You were 12. Well, are you? Maybe you were. 13. If you were 12, I was 13. No, no, no. Let's see. If you were 12, if you had passed yeah, I your was 12th 12. birthday, you were 13. I was 13 because Correct. I'm, what, eight months older that's, than you that's or That's exactly right. Yeah. Or you're right. three months younger, or however you want to look That's at exactly it. right. Whatever. But this was a very important memory of history for me because I remember seeing this cute kid with this gospel quartet haircut. Yeah, that had Big that. black hair, man. I mean, it yeah, was like shining. That. It was almost midnight blue. Yeah, I had that. And... You didn't really look like all the other campers to me. <laughs> and I wasn't trying to be mean. I'm just saying you just stood out. Yeah, I've been told that. Yeah, you didn't. 
I don't know what it was. You okay. just had, and so. So that was when we first that met. That was my first, and I went up to you, mm-hmm. and you actually put the accordion down and went to the piano before mm. I said anything to you. I see. And there were kids, you know, running around and doing stuff. And you started playing the piano, and I was like, "Oh, well, maybe he is the camp musician." Ah. I didn't. I really didn't know if you were a. Uh, because he looked old. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> not this, not I right here, but you said it otherwise, other places. <laughs> no, you looked older. <laughs> it's, you look, whatever. You looked older than a 13 year old. Okay, Let's just so say moving that. on. Okay, so, so yeah. I go up to you. You finally, I have the nerve, mm. and I'm trying to think who was with me. Somebody, and Lois, my girlfriend, never went to camp with mm-hmm. me, but I had. I feel like I always had somebody with me hanging on. It's as, this is all a gray cloud to me. Yeah, I have no recollection. I know I had of this somebody. I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Ruthie Newkirk. Mm. I don't know. I had somebody from church. So you talked to me, and I did. I went up to you, and I said, "You were playing," and I said, "Hi," and you said, "Hi," and I said, "Wow." that you really play well and and to this day basically what you said well you know thank you i I said you know you said something to the effect of you know if it wasn't for for god i wouldn't be able to do it that kind of thing and i remember saying from that point on Mm -hmm. how impressed i was with you until (laughs) until later in the week what did i do you were in the snack shop oh well yeah that was righteous indignation (laughs) And a girl was fooling. There with was you. a girl that was vying for my attention. Yes, yes. You you were not there. I do not believe so. I don't know. I, I saw the aftermath of it. Yeah, so did a lot of other folks. Yeah. I was sitting there, and it was the Friday night of the camp week, I believe, where everyone got dressed up. Right, we, we were had all a in banquet. Our, our good do- and I had my nice, and it was a new outfit that my right. parents had bought, tie and jacket, and so forth and so on. After after all of that, I was sitting in the snack shop later on that evening eating a hamburger and drinking a milkshake and she had been vying for my attention on and off through the week you know i think i think she liked you probably you know i you had, just didn't like, know how to like go I say, about it you had this piano thing going whatever it was the attraction theory i guess so i'm sitting there and she had been making you know advances digging, no digging con oh, 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 oh. it was it was a constant devil anyway oh. she said something to yeah, me yeah. and i probably answered with a, a mad answer snappy comeback to yes stupid you did questions. mad magazines yeah snappy answers to, to stupid, stupid questions. questions yes and the next thing I know, I'm looking down, is I feel liquid on the top of my oh, head. Oh, no. I couldn't believe had, that. Uh, yeah, because she had dumped her Coke on my head for whatever reason, I do not know. And so I looked up at her, the soda's dripping down my face, and I looked at her and said, do you think that's funny? And oh, she's standing no. there laughing. Yeah. And I said, well, then you're really going to get a kick out of this. And I picked up my chocolate milkshake and threw it in her face. And by then, it's like what happens. And she had in- a wet or she had a white, excuse me, oh. white uh, blouse on, yeah. knit, knit blouse on. And, and it ran all the down her, the front of her blouse. The and unfortunately, and she like ran it, out screaming or in something baseball. Like that. You get the retaliation. You get kicked out of the game. Of she course. doesn't. Yeah. I, yeah. Right. Because they. I, because the umpires did not see right, the and the first guy in the ki- right, and the woman in the snack shop had a, a hemorrhagic fever fit, <laughs> and and screaming and yelling. And I stood up and I said, "Give me the mop, I'll clean yeah, it up." You, you know? had to clean. Well, I basically did. Yeah, I mopped it up, and because my mother had taught me how to do and those things. And you were things. banned from the snack shop for two or three days or whatever it was yeah. by Bob Wise, his yeah. name is, oh who was the my camp director. Gosh, Bob Wise. And uh but he relented the next day and felt sorry for me and I think yeah. I have a feeling he investigated and found out that I was not the instigator. No, I was, you were I not. I was reacting. I was not no. instigating. And I felt badly for you. I really did. I feel didn't badly. feel bad at all. I loved how I threw that milkshake <laughs> on that girl. <laughs> But no, I, I just felt bad that you were picked on. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess. Now, let me ask you this question. Okay. Why? Because I think because you played the piano so well, you were really, you know, I don't know what it was I as a kid. Either. I don't, I think people just didn't know how to handle that. And I, especially your peer group. I mm. mean, you had some that you obviously grew up with in church that didn't think anything about it, but I you guess. even had some trouble. You know, in the competition scenario at Bridgeton High School, where oh, yeah. you're always trying to have to prove yourself. I guess, yeah. 
I, I give you know, I just kind of took it in stride. I mean, you know, because as you well know, and I, and we were kind of stuck here in this segment of camp. We, there's more to our history than. Oh well, yeah, and we'll take shades. that on another another podcast. I was going to we'll say part cause you, two because you've run it up pretty good. There oh no, no. Your, well, this yeah. is important because you know okay. I don't like bullying, and I don't like, okay. and I think people that have been have the history of being bullied have to deal with things. You you basically, and I remember it was at a retreat. Oh, I've been known to nail a couple of people. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, wasn't it Bob Beale that said to you, why has it been... Well, that has nothing to do with bullying. No, no, no. But you have been comfortable behind the keyboard and behind the piano yes, because that is the one thing that, that brings people to you. Yes, he encouraged me to get out from behind the keyboard, so as it were. Dr. Bob Beale is a great, great... Um, psychologist and writer look him up he's just really good and he and, encouraged me to, to do that and develop you know basically get a personality right um <laughs> in, a, in a nice way i know but the history is this the history that i became a part of watching well that was the beginning that of was it. really the beginning and yeah. then i was so excited to find out one day one day one day um your pastor and yes. my pastor got yes. together and said, yes. let's have a Valentine banquet with both of our youth as, groups. As I recall, would have been that following winter. That following winter. Mm -hmm. And I think we saw, my, my uh, family and I saw you play mm. at an event, and I don't know if it was a youth rally, a Youth for Christ rally. A, I, guess. I don't know what it was. Mm. And we saw you, and that's when my grandmother was with me, and mm -hmm. I pointed out to her and I said, "That's the kid I met at camp." Mm -hmm. And then, and then, and you know, I tell this story all the time. But that's that's when she leaned over to me and said, "Well, whatever you do in this life, marry that man." And I, <laughs> and like, I, you know, I never have believed that story. And I know that I, is really I the still truth. Do not believe that. Story. No, it is the truth. Okay, it's very much so the truth. Were your parents and grandparents concerned about your? Of eligibility for marriage? No, or they what? just they just liked piano playing. Ah, okay. My mother was a piano player. Yes, she was. My grandmother was a piano yes, player. Yes, she was. My great aunt Ruth was a piano yes, player. Yes, she was. You know, so yeah, it was it was that was during the time where that didn't win over your father, but that's no, another story. We, we but I didn't that. even know I could sing yet, and they all wanted me to play, and I mm, sang mm, things. But thought it would rub off, I guess. No, playing the piano was of more importance me growing up than any any sports or anything I ever did, and I never really pursued it. And mm. I and I know I made my mother mad. Yeah, you probably did. That's why she loved you so much. <laughs> So all that to say, we, we, we now go to February, and we only got a few minutes left on this podcast. Yeah. I promise you, we will continue it next week. Oh, this is riveting. It is riveting. Yeah. And so we end up going to your church, yes. and then that's when it all... Well, it started because your cousin, Stephen, oh, that's right. came to me at some point during the festivities. Yes. Um, and, and I believe it, the, the main party was taking place... In the basement of the church. Yes, it was. For and some had... reason, maybe because I was in the restroom or something upstairs, yeah. he came up to me upstairs and said, my cousin wants to meet you. That's exactly right. Or re-meet you. Well, Did you remember say... me from camp at that no, point? No, I still <gasps> don't remember you from camp. See, this is, this is why you need to study history. <laughs> you don't remember your future wife? <laughs> I'm so disappointed. And not from then. So he, he did not say re-meet. He said meet. Oh, well, see, then I reminded you, and you didn't even remember me, and I was so I was So, so we met. We did. Let's move past the offense of the of, and then of we got, 40 years, we got, 50 years we, we, ago. We held hands immediately. It was like, okay. I think we even did a tad more than that. I even think we went behind the wall, and I you even kissed me or something. Uh, or something In the like church. Someone, <gasps> or someone kissed In someone. In the church. Yeah. Oh, at, that's at awful. The, at 13 the years old. 13 years of age. <laughs> Yes. Little did we know. Oh dear. <laughs> so we're going to stop right here. Children, <laughs> let's let's just let this be a lesson to you. <laughs> let Never let your 13-year-old <laughs> kids go to a youth Valentine's banquet. Well, and there's a part of me where I know my kids love. So we're going to leave them on that. Yeah, note, we huh? are because we're going to continue the cliffhanger here. We're gonna, this is a this is a uh, uh, what it, what is the word? Uh, not treaty. Uh, what is some teaser? That's the it's word I'm teaser. looking for. It is a teaser. For the next I'm one. not Russian to get oh, through this story, God, no. oh. and I'm not Stalin. You're not you, anymore. Oh. <laughs> 
So, you know, you're a great storyteller and funny things happen to you, <laughs> but you ain't a joke teller. I know. No. I know. It's true. Yeah, anyway, it, I just it, thought that it, was kind of fun. Yeah. So sure. we're going to continue next week then with mm-hmm. what happens after the Valentine banquet and <laughs> a few other tuned. things. Stay tuned, man. You won't believe some of this For stuff. For the riveting conclusion. The riveting conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Subiquitous <laughs> Podcast, thank you, Jeff, is brought to you every single week by Patreon.com. Patreon.com forward slash Sue Duffield. And I want to thank my patrons. Hugely do I want to thank you. And if you'd like to be a part of the team, by all means, get on Patreon.com forward slash Sue Duffield and become a member of the team that helps us to get the word out, the crazy, nonsensical inspiration of the Subiquitous podcast every single week. Now, here's my goal. My goal is is that we present Jesus in the most amazing, amusing, and wonderful way in a reality check that the world is really going to hell. Let's face it. But praise God, we have Jesus that overcomes the world. And I'm looking forward to a great time in Jesus' name. So thank you for tuning in today. You can also get on SueDuffield.com. And there are ways to donate towards our ministry. There's also great information about our CDs and downloads and my book called Subiquitous.com. And I also want to thank you in advance for those of you that have written me emails and have written great letters of support and great letters of encouragement. Thank you. That keeps us going every single week. So stay tuned next week for episode 14, part two of History is Really Good. And we're going to find out a little bit more about the Duffields like we really want to know. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next week.